to be with uh, family and friends once again, um, for truly this is um, a day um, and a season to where God is doing more than what the devil is. Um, a lot of times people like to say the devil is busy, um, but I want you to know that God is um, ever so moving in our lives. And so it is our responsibility to focus on what he is doing um, and to literally ignore what the enemy is doing. So let's go to the word of the Lord tonight. I'm going to start in Hebrews 4 verse 12. Um, as we conclude this month's uh, journey through Black history, I'm just kidding, as we uh, conclude this month's <laughs> Bible teaching series, um, we uh, uh, have, have discussed um, the kingdom of God being in us. We've also discussed um, the prophetic word of the Lord. Um, but tonight I want to discuss um, activating uh, the word of the Lord in you. Uh, something happens when we go a step further uh, and to begin to decree and to declare what the Lord has spoken over us um, as a prophet of God, um, as an apostle of the Lord. Uh, yes, God does give me things to say, to decree, to declare. God does allow me to see some things. Um, but one thing I know for certain and another thing that I know definitely for sure is that when you decree the word of the Lord for your own self, God moves in a profound way. Um, and Hebrews 4 and 12 says uh, that the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And so when we talk about the word of the Lord, whether it be the logos, the written word, uh, the rhema, the spoken or decreed word of God, um, uh, it is powerful. Uh, the, the word of the Lord again in Hebrews 4 declares that it is quick, it is living, the word of the Lord is living. Uh, 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 even when we begin to uh, recall all of the things that God has spoken over our lives, um, that's one of the things I want you to understand tonight, um, is that the word of the Lord is quick. Um, and quickness or, uh, uh, or living, uh, as it is translated, uh, cannot be put on our timetable, but it is on his divine timetable. Um, and I say his divine timetable because God cannot be confined by time. Um, he does not exist in time, but time does exist in him. Um, uh, uh, so with that being said, I know that uh, died of people said he may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. Uh, but that's all a, a matter of per perspective. Um, did he show up on time or did you receive the revelation a little bit too late? Uh, sometimes when the Lord speaks and we're not in the proper place or proper positioning to receive it, um, it will take some time for us to mature um, until we do understand exactly what God said. Uh, think about it. Things that you may have been taught in school or heard over the years uh, really didn't make too much sense until you got a little bit older. Things that grandma said when you were younger didn't really make too much sense until you became grandma's age at that time that she spoke it to you. And therefore, again, it's not a matter of timing, but it is a matter of maturation. It is a matter of have you matured to the point that you can handle it. And oftentimes when we receive the word of the Lord, um, it, it's not that you receive the word of the Lord out of time or, or that um, I, don't ever say that, you know, uh, delay me, or, you know, just because I'm delayed doesn't mean I'm denied. Um, there is no delay in the Lord. Hallelujah. He, he, he is not slack. Concerning his promises, as some men account slackness, 
But when God speaks, things happen. If you look in Genesis chapter one, like I said last week, if you look at Genesis chapter one and Genesis chapter two, when God speaks, when God spoke, something happened instantaneous. All of creation had to respond to his voice. And so there, there, there's, there's a difference between saying words and speaking in the voice of the spirit. There's a difference between uh, just repeating what someone said and you actually tapping into it or activating the authority, uh, the authority of the words uh, that you are speaking. And so um, my first bus stop tonight is just to uh, remind us is that uh, the word produces results. When? Instantaneously. Instantaneous results. Well, what if it doesn't change what it looks like? The word produces instantaneous results. Or what if I don't feel any different? The word produces instantaneous results. The word of the Lord is not based on a feeling. Uh, it is based on the knowing. And you have to know in your knower. Hallelujah. That's not a real word, but I'm going to use it tonight. You have to know in your knower. Uh, not N-O-A-H, but your N, your K-N-O-W apostrophe R, uh -huh, Noah, uh, that God said what he said, and that settles it. Um, there is no good thing that the Lord will withhold from them who love him and walk up right before him. That's the word. Hallelujah. Um, and God is obligated to uphold, to honor, to protect, and to defend his word. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. If he spoke it, he's going to uh, uphold it. He's going to honor it. He's going to protect, and he's going to defend it. Anything that God has spoken, begin to uh, uh, picture in your mind as a mother hen broods over those eggs, uh, uh, not, not leaving them uh, uh, unattended. Uh, that's how God broods or watches over his word. Um, uh, that's how God watches over his word in uh, uh, Romans 10. We see something that has been taken out of context and it, it does apply to salvation. Uh, let me first say that it does apply to salvation, but it does not only apply to salvation when we uh, see what I refer to as, or what is known as the law of confession. Um, the Bible says in Romans 10, verse 9, that if a man, uh, if anyone confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus, they shall be saved. Um, uh, for with, you know, with the mouth confession is made unto righteousness. Um, but that does not just stop there as far as your salvation is concerned. You know, everything that we have as far as our God-given birthright, as his exact images and in his likeness here in the earth uh, hinges upon this law. It hinges upon what Genesis chapter eight declares as the law of sowing and reaping. Meaning if you sow it into the atmosphere, it has to bring forth uh, 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 a result. Um, the law, and when you define the word confession, def, uh, the word confession um, in the Greek is the Greek word homologio. Uh, which means homo, same, uh, logio, words, same words. And so when we operate in the law of confession, when we utilize what uh, 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 or repeating what God, uh, what his word has declared, the law of confession simply states that you simply say what has been said. Um, you simply speak over yourself what God's word says, period, point blank. Um, Isaiah 55 and 11 says that his word cannot return back to him void. It cannot return back to him without having accomplished what it was set out to do because his ways are not his ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. As far as the heavens are above the earth, so far are his ways above our ways. And so when we look tonight in the word of the Lord, we see that it is God's good pleasure to do things for those who he loves. We see that if we would only tap into and activate the anointing of God that he's placed upon our lives by speaking that which he has said. Now, I guess that would be the first uh, 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 sub uh, uh, point uh, right there is that we have to identify 
or discern uh, between whose voice has been speaking. Uh, just because you've been hearing something all your life doesn't mean it was God spoken. Uh, some of you may have been hearing all of your life that uh, you'll be broke all your life. Someone uh, may have heard that um, uh, uh, high blood pressure runs in the family. Some of you may have heard all your life um, uh, that you're not good enough for this job, that you're not equipped well enough, that you're not educated enough. You may have heard all of those things over your life. But can I just tell you tonight that if God didn't say any of those things, then you literally need to stop listening to those things right now. You literally need to stop taking into account all of those factors. And number one, stop trying to do things to try to prove those things wrong because they never mattered in the first place. Hallelujah. Um, when we look at the word of the Lord and we look at it from the standpoint of God's word is the final authority. It is the final authority for the believer meaning that the word should be our foundation. Um, it should be the thing that we abide in. It should be our, our house. Literally, we should find ourselves abiding in the word. We should find ourselves living in the word. We should find ourselves breathing, inhaling the word. Um, and, and, I, and I'm saying that uh, because sometimes if we're not careful, uh, we will find ourselves consuming things that sound scriptural, but are not godly. Um, so, good point. Um, if you take one step, he'll take two. Sounds real scriptural. It ain't in there. <laughs> when praises go up, blessings come down. Sounds scriptural. It ain't in there. <laughs> What he's done for others, he'll do for you. Mm, sounds scriptural. If it ain't in there. The Bible says when your ways are pleasing unto the Lord, then he will give you the desires of your heart. So just because God did it for somebody don't mean, oh, I'm next. If your ways aren't pleasing to him, he will not do it for you. That's why it's very important that we live a lifestyle of holiness. Holiness is not a denomination. Um, I uh, don't mean to offend anybody tonight that belongs to a holiness church, but it's not a denomination. It's a it's a it's a it's a state of condition. Um, you have to be conditioned to be holy, um, just like a, anyone that um, exercises um, to build muscle. Um, you condition your body to undergo certain things so that uh, when you run, well, I ain't gonna say nothing that I don't do. If you walk fast, then you're not winded. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, uh, but you have to be conditioned. You, you have to condition yourself for certain things um, to lift um, five pounds, uh, maybe a feet for some for somebody. Uh, uh, um, I think I can lift about about 70 something pounds. I think that's how much my knees weigh. So I'm good with 70. Uh, for about three seconds, no longer than three. I'm like, hey, baby, hold, hey, hey, how you doing? Okay, time to get down. Um, uh, but your body has to be conditioned for that. Likewise, also, as we operate in the things of God, if your faith has not been conditioned to handle certain things, that means you just can't jump out there all willy-nilly. In other words, the Bible calls that zeal, uh, 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 being zealous, you know, being energetic about a thing, but yet having no knowledge of it uh, literally equals no results. Um, it is, our, I, I believe it is God's plan for us to be excited, to be zealous, to have the, to have the zeal for God uh, and the things of God, but to also have the knowledge to know um, that just because things do not change when we speak it does not mean that they haven't changed when we spoke it. In other words, you spoke it, like I said earlier, you spoke it. And just because I always, I always look at things like this. The Bible says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Okay. 
Um, if we look, think about nighttime right now, those of us on the East Coast, um, it is eight something. Uh, it is 8.22 and it's dark outside. At, in four hours, it will be midnight. It's still gonna be dark outside. At 12.01, Technically, it's morning. Technically, it will no longer be PM. It will not. It, it will. It will. It will not be night. It will be morning. Although it's morning, it still will be dark outside. It's been like that for eons, for decades, from from the beginning of time since since God spoke <laughs> in Genesis that let there be two lights, <laughs> one to govern the day, one to govern the night. Uh, uh, still, it will be nighttime. Just because it's morning or just because it's night and it's still dark doesn't mean morning has not come. And sometimes when you realize that, just that simple, that sometimes you could be in the middle of your midnight. Midnight only lasts for 60 seconds. Midnight only lasts for 60 seconds. Oh, well, for 59 seconds, I'll say that. Because on that 60th second, daybreak comes. Morning, morning comes, morning comes. And though it, it may be five hours to daybreak, it might be six hours to daybreak, it might be seven hours to daybreak, but morning has already come. And I'm saying that uh, uh, because I sense in the spirit that someone right now um, is, is literally in the midst of a, a, a valley of decision and don't make a decision out of desperation. Don't make, a, uh, don't make a decision out of desperation because it looks as though uh, things haven't changed. Things have changed. It's just like when um, years ago we had a hurricane to come through um, North Carolina, like we was on the coast uh, here in, in the Charlotte area called Hugo. Um, and it was reported that uh, science, you know, I used to want to be, well, you didn't know this, but I used to want to be a scientist. Um, um, and so I found this fascinating how Hugo gained strength over land, which is impossible according to science as far as a hurricane is concerned. Uh, not a tornado, a hurricane gained strength while being over land. Um, and we heard the wind. Um, some of us were almost pummeled by tree limbs and mailboxes, but that neither here nor there, just being stupid, not bold, being stupid, going outside in the middle of a hurricane. Um, tell y'all about that later. Um, after all of that, all of that wind and noise and crashing and bumps and all of that, still dark outside. It wasn't until the sun came up when the family, we went out. Well, we really didn't go out, we just opened the door. Because when we opened the door, we said, we ain't going out there. <laughs> and all we saw was the debris. The storm was over, but the debris was still around. Even to this day, there are trees in my mom's backyard that are dying, still dying, and have been weakened because of Hugo. They're still dying, or they are still proof of the residue from the storm that was in the 90s. Some of you right now, stop saying you're going through the storm. You're just dealing with the residue. Some of you are dealing with things that, are, that were left over from the storm, but it's not the storm. And so tonight we're going to, I want to I want to challenge you to to change your thinking and change change your uh, your way of speaking. Uh, um, I'm not a computer savvy person like uh, Apostle Marvin is, um, so he will understand this. Um, uh, I have a computer, um, and my, don't you laugh at me, but I have Windows 97 on that computer. Um, um, they keep saying, do you want to upgrade? No, I don't want to upgrade. Uh, now, I do have another computer that has Windows 10. And no, I'm not upgrading that either. 
um, and I, I bring that up because when I did upgrade the one that had that has Windows 97 on it to Windows 10, I couldn't find anything. I couldn't navigate through it. Um, and the reason why, although it had been upgraded and updated, I was still trying to use it as if it was still a Windows 97 format. There is no way you can receive an upgrade or an update and still operate using the old mentality or old mindset. If God has said the storm is over and you're just dealing with the residue, that means you have to change your mind of how you deal with life. Um, some of us have to get out of the mindset. I know I say this all the time, the, the color purple mindset of all my life I had to fight. Then you get to a point that you're not even supposed to be fighting anymore. And then the one you're fighting is actually God. It is not meant for you and I to go through life, to continue to have battles all the time. I believe in Exodus, um, the Lord said, look, I'll fight your battles if you just be still. <laughs> and so the, the, the very fact that we say well, we have to fight is really an untruth. You don't have to fight. He's fighting for you. The thing that we have to do in this flesh is to put our flesh under subjection to the power of the Holy Spirit, causing it to die. When? Daily. Um, first scripture I want to go to tonight um, is Psalm 138, verse 2. Let's see what that says. I will bow toward you, holy temple. I will give you thanks. I will give thanks to your name because of your mercy and truth. You have made your name and your promise greater than every thing. What that literally says is that the word of the Lord, I'm, I know I may throw some theologians off when I say this, what that literally means is that the word of the Lord supersedes the name of Jesus. Yes, there, uh, there is no name above his name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. But what the word of the Lord said here is that his word is higher than the name of Christ. And so when we look at even the person of Christ, when we look at how he came, he came as the embodiment of the word. The logos became flesh and dwelt among men. Uh, 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 Jesus literally wrapped himself. I know we say he wrapped himself his flesh in flesh, but no, he literally wrapped himself in the word and the word became flesh. That's what Luke says. Jesus wrapped himself in the word. Every promise, every prophecy, every subtext, every, every, every omitted book of the Bible uh, that is not included in these 66 books. Um, side note, and a lot of people want to say, well, why didn't it include those in the Bible? Well, let me say this. If it's hard for us to get the 66 right, let's not worry about the others. Hallelujah. Moving right along. He wrapped himself in the word of God and then wrapped himself in flesh, which gives us a revelation like no other. If you want to win in every area of your life, again, like I said last week, stop thinking of yourself as I'm only human. That ain't even the word. <laughs> Once you receive Jesus Christ as your personal, somebody say personal, Lord and Savior, he takes your sinful humanity and exchanges it with his righteousness. Therefore, whenever God the Father looks at you and I, he doesn't see sinful humanity. He doesn't see sin-stained flesh. He doesn't see uh, flesh that's been embodied and emboldened with iniquity and transgression, but he sees the blood of Jesus covering us. In other, in other words, he sees his word. That's right. He, Whenever he sees you, once you've been redeemed, once you accept it and receive salvation, the precious gift, of Jesus Christ given to us through God the Father. He sees his word. Now, the thing is, if I'm the word, 
if I'm if I'm an illustration of his word in the earth. I'm supposed to show some signs that I'm the word, because, again, the word of the Lord says, like I said last week, signs follow them that believe. If you believe the word of the Lord. That literally means. Miracles are supposed to be happening. And let me let me let me let me point this out. Let me ask a redundant question. Did you wake up this morning? That's a miracle. Now, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm not being facetious. But sometimes we can't acknowledge or won't experience the, the big miracles because we disregard the, the, <laughs> the ones that's right in our face. You waking up this morning, that's a miracle. You making it through today, that was a miracle. Somebody didn't make it home. Somebody went to work, some idiot, some demon-possessed individual came in and shot up the job. They didn't make it home. You did. That's a miracle. Some people, some people died of an unknown disease. Some people died of whatever. You didn't. That is a miracle. And the greatest miracle of all is salvation. <laughs> God transformed our sin-stained individual selves into the express image. He exchanged our humanity for his eternity. That's a miracle. So that e even if this body doesn't happen to wake up in the morning, you know, there's a song um, Grandma and used to sing years ago that said, uh, if I don't wake up in the morning, it will be all right. Now you'd be like, what you mean it's going to be all right? I'm like, I, woman, I need you to cook breakfast. I'm just kidding. Uh, no, but like, if I don't wake up in the morning, it will be, you have to be so certain and so sure and so confident of your eternal home that you don't let the little annoyances about this life get you to acting like you don't know where you're going. If I know I'm going to heaven and I know something, there will be things on a day-to-day -day basis to upset us if we allow them to. Trust me, and I even tried to stay in the house by myself all day long. Even in the house by yourself, something will make you mad. Even in the house by yourself, something will upset you. Just by being on this thing, yeah. Somebody go call, it's going to say something. It's going to make you want to jump through there. And which leads me to this. Be careful of who you allow to speak over you. Over the past three weeks, many of us have received prophetic words or, or the word of the Lord has been spoken. God has spoken. I know he may have used my mouth, but God spoke it. We, I, we can't take credit for what God is doing. And, and I'm saying that because even when, when Apostle Marvin and Prophet Zanya speak, it is under the authority of God. You have to begin to understand and, and reverence the voice of God and the oracles of God for who they are because too often miracles don't take place because we disregard who it came from. You know, there are a lot of people right now that, for lack of better terminology, they've given up on the church because uh, in, in this past dispute or in the past season that we came out of, the past election season, a lot of people were speaking, saying God said stuff, which he did not say. But let's just be honest. That's been going on. I'm not saying I'm not I'm not I'm not downing anybody. I'm not, I'm definitely not not speaking against anybody that may have been led to do this. If you've been led to do it, all right. But do you really think God wants us to pray for Ukraine? I know that may seem kind of random. I'm like you got issues right now. You at war with yourself, and you love the Lord. I know some people. Well, that, that's a, you know, that's my brother, our brother's keeper. They ain't got nothing to do with that. This world is not our home. And here in this, these United States of America, we have to get to the point that we stop utilizing and using the Bible like America is the featured honorees in the word. What God is doing, he's doing it based on his chosen people, Israel. 
and everything that he has spoken concerning Israel is going to come to pass, somebody say, in this season. There's some things that he's working out for you right now because you are Israel. I know I said it jokingly earlier, and I wasn't going to go here, but I'll go here real quick. If everybody on here tonight, if you look like me, even if you don't look like me, you've been engrafted into the body of Christ. But I want you to get a map. Pull a map. Would you pull a map? Not unless you're on Zoom on your phone, but get a map. And I want you to look at the landscape of everything. I want you to look where Israel is. I want you to look where Israel is situated. And I want you to see that it is not, and understand that when things were divided, and, 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 and separated, things were divided and separated for the purpose of causing division. And so everything over there used to be Africa. That's a black history fact. Go look it up. Take a look. Okay, I'm sorry. No, go look it up. It's Africa. And I'm saying that because if, if, if Moses, right, being born, and the Bible says, Yoshebed hid him in Egypt. I think it would be pretty easy to identify a child that didn't look like an African if Israel, that area, wasn't a part of Africa. If Joseph and Mary hid <laughs> in the same area, same region, well, what, what, like, well, okay, so I know it may seem like a tangent, but it wasn't. We have to begin to understand that one of the key things about the word is that you have to begin to understand and realize that the word is for you. Stop thinking of yourselves as Gentiles. You are God's chosen people. God died. God's whole plan was to get us back to himself. But before that, he wants us to be his express image in the earth. And how do we do that? It's by releasing his authority and his power in the earth. Well, how do we do that? By speaking the word. Again, homologio, we have to say what has been said, not interpretations of what, what has been said. Because the Bible don't say, um, um, you know, you can hang out with these people all day. They're doing stuff they don't need to do and be a witness to them. That's not what the word of the Lord says. The word of the Lord says, come out from among them and be separate, thus saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. God is going to literally increase your witness for some of you that have been evangelized. He's going to increase your witness when you stop hanging out with the people that you're trying to minister to. You can't be a fruitful witness if you keep doing what they're doing. Anybody ever know anybody? I ain't going to call nobody no drunk on here tonight. But anybody ever know somebody that be drinking and soon they get drunk? That's when they want to start speaking scriptures. So the alcoholic can, can quote scriptures. You hanging out with people who have no intention of changing means absolutely nothing to them when you start speaking truth. Come out from among them and be separate. And when they say, oh, you think you're better than us? Let them know. No, but I am better than what I used to be. I don't have to be drunk all the time. I don't, you know, love, love your liver and your kidneys enough. You know, he is Jehovah Jireh. He is Jehovah Nisi. But he is not Jehovah Repha. So you smoking and getting high with folk. Tell myself, I'm going to lead them to the Lord. The devil. All right. I'm sorry. Let me finish. I was trying to be serious, y'all. Y'all stop it tonight. Um, remember that God's word was given. It was it was given given um, uh, for the purpose of uh, to reveal, to to refute, to reproduce. Um, what's my next scripture? I get tonight. The other the scripture is Second Timothy, third chapter, sixteen through seventeen. Uh -huh. Read that for me. Uh, oh, every scripture patch, passage is inspired by God. All of them are useful for teaching, pointing out errors, connecting people, sorry, correcting people and training them for a life that has God's approval. 
They equip God's servants so that they are completely prepared to do good things. And that's because of the word, right? So if the word of the Lord has come to equip us to do good things, stop sitting back talking about, oh, I hope I can do this. Oh, I wish I could just help these people out. One of the best ways we, we can help each other is through prayer. Um, uh, and those of you that will be available, I encourage you to join uh, Mars Worship Life Center this Saturday morning for a fervent, fervent prayer. Um, but prayer is not the time to give God a laundry list. God is not Santa Claus. He's not sitting there wanting to know um, what you want. Prayer is, in essence, and I call it neology. Um, uh, prayer is, in essence, um, a one to three percent what we say on our knees, and 97, 97 to ninety nine percent what we say when we get up. Well, how is that? Because sometimes we can pray for stuff while we're on our knees or in prayer. But we neglect to remember that simply talking is still talking to God. The Bible says we will give, a, we will give an account for every idle deed that we've done, every idle word that is spoken as well. So that it, God doesn't take breaks from listening to what's coming out of our mouths. Guess what? Neither does creation. Everything we speak hinges on a scientific fact called cause and effect. Biblically, it's called sowing and reaping. Everything we say. Think about it. You said she make me sick. Then when she came around, you get, oh, you get, oh, you, you get agitated, you get aggravated because you kept saying she made you sick. Oh, he get on my nerves. You want a wife time? He, he say something. You just feel like, because you keep saying he get on your nerves. Oh, they ain't going to never change. And you wonder why they haven't changed yet. Because every time you speak, the way God has created us, being in his image, when we speak, creation aligns itself Good, good, good fact, good fact. I don't know if you did it, but I don't know if you ever heard anyone within the past couple of weeks with the global situation going on uh, um, with, with Ukraine or even with the pandemic. Do you, did you, if you can think about it right now, do you recall hearing people state that, oh, this is going to get bad. Oh, they're going to war before it happened because chances are that's the reason why we're in the state we're in right now people who have the holy spirit on the inside of them releasing that power and you know what that that's called it's called witchcraft when we use the word of the lord to decree a thing that does not glorify him when we use the power and the anointing uh, anointing of god the unction of god on the inside of us to decree a thing that has nothing to do with bringing souls into the kingdom. I guarantee you right now, if you start speaking that, that loved one's name right now that you've been praying for, go ahead, begin to just decree and declare that their mind is going to be renewed, that their soul will be saved, that their, their whole family will be at peace. And look, if you need them to leave you alone, decree that too. Hallelujah. Because some of us need rest from folk. Some of us need rest for being bombarded and, and tormented by people's foolishness. Um, Psalm 23 starts off with this very powerful statement. And it says, he is Jehovah Rohi. Oh, I'm sorry. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. And everything that follows that are attributes of his, of him being the shepherd. Jesus himself said, look, the good shepherd cares for the sheep. If our father cares for us, and he does, 
And what a shepherd does is that he guides sheep. He don't, even when, even in Psalm 23, when it says he maketh me to lie down in green pastures, the, the word maketh is, is really the wrong verbiage there. Because what the original text says, can't remember the Hebrew word for it, but the, what the original text says is that he positions me in a place that all I want to do is rest in him. I mean, it's like, if you're in a place of rest, don't that make you want to? But he don't make you lie down. He don't, he, God don't, God doesn't make us do anything. Now, what he does do as far as making, he'll make your enemies be at peace with you. He'll make it so every time they open up their mouth against you, he'll shut their mouths. He'll make it so every time something comes against you, he'll block it. He'll make it so every time a trap is set for you, it will literally be utilized for your good, for your embitterment, for your progression, and not for not for your uh, 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 destruction. Um, one of the last things I want to say. Um, situations, circumstances um, that we all may face right now, they are literally a byproduct of our words. Um, just as I said, what you say on your on your knees is sometimes overshadowed by what you say throughout the day. If you've been praying for healing, but yet throughout the day, all you've done is complain about how hurt it, how hurt you are, the aches and the pains, and you keep saying, "My this, uh, my sickness, my disease, my blood pressure, my sugar, this, that, and the third. You're literally claiming, well, no, thank you, Holy Spirit. You're literally rebuking the prayer of healing that you released on your knees. Just think about it. I pray for healing. God's sending it. And it gets almost to you. And then you say, well, you know, I can't do that because I got such and such. I've never before in my lifetime seen so many people who claim to know and love Jesus um, just totally disregard his word then at the beginning of this pandemic um, uh, when they begin to talk about how um, this particular mutation of the coronavirus affects people with underlying health conditions and then all of a sudden it's the, the pe same people that's been claiming healing for years or months or weeks stop claiming healing and started saying well you know I got this underlying health condition Let the underlying health condition that you have be healed. That's the only underlying health condition we have as a believer. We're healed. No, it ain't. The other underlying health condition you have is, pro is prosperous. <laughs> the, the other underlying health condition you have is wealthy. The other underlying health condition you have is joy and peace and happiness and long suffering and faith. Those are the underlying health conditions of the believer. Other than that, we can't keep claiming stuff that God says, I want to. The word of the Lord says, if the sun shall make you free, or if the sun sets you free, why should you be bound? If Christ has come to set you free, how do you tell him, I'm good, come back later? I told mentorship class um, a couple of months ago about this. I did a revival at a, at a church in Mid-Hill or Matthews area in, here in North Carolina. And I think it was about the fourth day of the whole week revival. And the, the last night of, of the revival, I told the pastor I was going to pray for him, for his healing. He walked with a limp. Um, uh, uh, I think he had like some kind of degenerative bone disease of sorts. And the Lord, Spirit of the Lord told me to pray for him. And God was going to heal him that night. And as I went to pray for him, 
Now, mind you, the Lord had been working miracles that entire week, that Monday up to that, that day. He'd seen the power of God moving. As I went to go pray for him and told him what the Lord was about to do, he said, hold up. Don't, don't, don't pray for me because um, I'm waiting on my disability. I couldn't even respond like I wanted to respond because I had my members there. And some of my members come from off the street, so I have to be very careful of how I respond to stuff because they're ready to fight. And so I had to make sure I didn't change my face or do nothing. But in my head, I was like, are you kidding me? You said, don't pray for your healing. After you after you didn't witness uh, 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 people get healed uh, uh, um, from from vision, uh, 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 not blindness, but stuff going on with their vision, uh, heard people get prophesied to or spoke over them about God eradicating debt, and they coming back the next night talking about something, they got an unexpected check in the mail for thousands of dollars. You mean after a whole week of that, and God says he wants to heal you, your response is, I'm waiting on my disability. And so me being me, the unintentional comic that I can be at times, I just simply told him, because I wanted to give him another opportunity to receive what God wanted for him. I said, well, man of God, just let me pray. I said, because I don't think they come back to check to see if you're still disabled once you get disability. Dude, dude, I don't know about that, but then we'll, I'll do a survey online later on. Um, that it, for, I'm gonna say, if anybody has ever received disability, do they come back? a year later to say, are you still disabled? Do you still not have legs? I mean, I'm not being facetious, the Lord, but I'm just being honest, truthful. But then he still said, no, 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 I'm good. Don't be like him. That ain't the way I was going to take this tonight, but don't be like him. If God is saying, I'm, I've come to give you life and it more abundantly, don't you dare tell God that he don't know what's best. Because let me ask you this question. How can we produce the promises of God? Is the answer. It is all in how we, um, it's about what we simply say, sing, praying, uh, declaring, but it all has to be God's word. Is the music that you listen to, is it glorifying God? Now, and, and I'm saying that some, 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 some people may have a struggle in their flesh because one of, one of the areas that the church does not like to talk about is sexual sin uh, in the church. Uh, unless it got to do with the pastor being exposed for something, but hey, it's, it's like he the only one that can't do it, but the members can. Get out of here with that. No. And we wonder why God ain't moving. And, and I believe the reason why a lot of um, sexual sin goes on is because the music that the believer listens to. Now look, if you marry, you go listen to Luther all you want to. Skinny or big Luther. Take your pick. But if you're single, you have no business listening to things that will feed your flesh or, or cause your flesh to be inquisitive or curious or lustful. There's some gospel songs you don't need to listen to. Did he just say that? Yeah, I did. Because if it's not scriptural, we don't need to be singing them. I think I said that the first, my first time with you all this month about uh, coming up the rough side of the mountain. Why? What God says, you can speak to it and command it to be moved. I don't know about you, but I can be a tad bit lazy. 
So if there's a way that I don't have to deal with no mountain, oh, trust me, that's the way I'm going to go. I'm going to speak to the mountain. And Jesus said, you can speak to a mountain. And he was being literal. He was not being figurative when he said this. Jesus told his disciples, he said, look, you have the faith the size of a mustard seed. He turned his disciples, he said, you can look at that mountain. He pointed at a mountain. Look at the word. He pointed to a mountain. He said, look, you can command that mountain to be moved from there and over there. And it has to obey. So are you speaking to your mountain to move tonight or are you empowering your mountain to stay in your way? Are, are, are you declaring for you that you can do all things through Christ that gives you strength? Or are you using the old cop out when I'm only human? Or this one, God knows my heart. I had to realize that that was the reason why I was going through the stuff I was going through is because God knew my heart, but I didn't. And so one of my prayers was God show me my heart. God show me me. God allow me to see why I keep getting in the way. Because if the devil is defeated, and he is, Sometimes the biggest mountain standing in your way is you. And the only way you can deal with that is by simply being truthful and honest and saying, God, I can't do this without you. Like, like prophecy is good. But what if you never got another prophecy in your life? Will you be happy? Or would you rather be happy or would you want to be made whole? And I'm saying that because happiness oftentimes is based on happenings. Sometimes when people are happy it's because of what's going on in their life. But when God comes to make you whole, he comes to restore everything everything. There's someone right now that's dealing with something in their life and, you know, you recently made a, made a decision um, uh, or, or a life decision. Um, and I hear the Lord say, even in that, it's not, it's not a trap and you're not cursed, but the mindset has to be shifted to where you begin to be the man of God. God has called you to be because even the, even the level of, of sorcery and witchcraft that you are under uh, uh, that you are experiencing, it will only continue if you don't stop it. So you have to open up your mouth, and you have to decree that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, not a form of God. No, we will serve Him all the way. Jehovah Elohim El Shaddai El Elyon Jesus Christ. We will serve the Lord. That's that's your that has to be your declaration. That has to be your confession. You can't keep courting the enemy and thinking that he ain't go. Don't let the enemy think that this is a friendship with benefits thing. Cut him off. Stop allowing him to think. Stop, stop allowing individuals to think that they have access into your life when they do not. God has positioned you right where you are so you can see that what he's about to do in your life is protected. And it's protected in a sense that even though there is a lot of saboteurs around you, God is literally tying their hands so everything they do to trap you is going to backfire on them. Hallelujah. And as it backfires on them, don't rejoice because they are still a soul. And I will say this, don't be like, don't be like Moses when God starts dealing with those who have come against you. Because I want you all to understand this real quickly, that this is the reason why Moses missed the promised land. Because every time God got ready to deal with folk that deserved to be dealt with, Moses was jumping in the way, interceding. And sometimes he didn't need to intercede. Sometimes God needed to deal with folk 
And again, I think, and I don't know if I said this earlier, but it bears repeating. The only thing that God is obligated to uphold himself to is his word. So that's why when I say the law of confession or co confession means homologio, you have to stay state back to him what he already said. That was one of the most profound things about uh, 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 when, Mo when God was about to literally wipe Israel off the face of the planet. And Moses said, now, wait a minute, Lord, now, now, you said these are your chosen people. You said, <laughs> you know, you know, and it, and it calls for God to change his mind. But if you look, read a little further, it, it causes God to change his mind, but God still did what he said he was going to do. Because he gave them time to reproduce, have children. But the Bible says everybody 20 years and up, those that were outright disobedient against the plan that he had set in motion, those that were habitually going against his will, the Bible says they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years until all of them died off. 40 years for a trip that should have only taken 11 days. And I don't know who this is for tonight, but you've been going around in a circle. It, it seems like there's no end, but because you have sincerely repented in within this month. And remember two is the number of witness and two is the number of division. God is going to allow you to witness his hand usher you into a season to where you're no longer struggling. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And stop saying you're struggling all the time. If anything, start decreeing, I'm going to make it. Start decreeing wealth and riches are in my house. Those of you over the past several weeks, if God has spoken to you about financial increase, begin to say that the wealth and riches are in my house. Don't just decree that you get uh, uh, money in the bank. No, begin to decree and to, to declare that you have the financial wisdom and insight to manage it, to be a good, to be a godly steward over it. I'm going to say this and we gonna get off here. Even, even in the realm, and and to each of you that obeyed, and 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 felt led to give last week when the Lord prompted me to do that, and uh, uh, the richest says, "No, I don't do that. I'm not. I'm not the money prophet." Um, uh, my spiritual father always tells me, he said, "Man, I'm so proud of you." I'm like, why? He said, man, the way you be seeing and stuff, he said, I just be expecting you to be on TV or on face on social media talking about some, uh, if you would just sold $84.11 and you can get this a holy oil or holy water. I said, man, because sometimes people do take stuff like that for granted and they do use it to manipulate and prostitute the people. But when you, with those of you who obeyed last week, God is about to do phenomenal things in your lives. Um, and as far as the tithe is concerned, this is and this is how God is going to bless you, whether you are part of Mars Worship Life Center. Um, if you get fed at Mars spiritually, then that's where you sow your tithe. That's where you give your offering. Um, and I'm, I'm saying that because I understand that on a platform like this, you have people that's a part of different churches. And so I'm not saying uh, don't give the old local church. Um, I ain't going to go there tonight. Uh, uh, I will. It's the last night. You know, last night of revival, you know, the preacher to say whatever you say. Go, ah, they ain't going to invite me back. No, some of you have to make the decision to stop going into dead places. You have to make that decision. If you want to see the hand of God move on your life, and you have to begin to understand, if you do choose to be a part of this ministry, this is not a a a ritualistic and legalistic church. And I'm saying saying that to say this, 
I can't say this isn't a religious church. It is. There's nothing wrong with religion. Jesus said pure religion and undefiled is that, look, you take care of the people, you take care of the homeless, you take care of the widow, you feed, you know, feed the hungry, clothe the naked. That's what true religion is. So when we say, you know, I'm, I'm tired of religion. No, there's nothing wrong with religion. It's ritualism. Those are things that people made up, rules and regulations that people made up that choke the life out of people. Like you can't walk, and I, please don't get mad when I say this. Uh, oh no, you can't walk during prayer. Why? I walk. I walk when I pray in at home. <laughs> now, now I'm, I'm not saying that to be to be disrespectful, but some of the times, some of the things that we we do and we say put so much restrictions that sometimes in your house of worship, God wants you to be a freely moving because His Spirit is freely moving. Let me get back to saying this. When you tithe, the Bible says, see if I, the Lord God, he said, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse so that there could be meat in my house. The same word there for meat is the same word found in 1 Corinthians, I believe, where it says, at the time that you should be teachers, you have one that you have need that one teach you again the foundational truths of the word, being that you are a babe on the milk of the word and are not able to bear strong meat. The same word there in, in Corinthians is the same word for meat used in, in, in uh, uh, Malachi. So meat does not need, does not mean food. When it, meat there means revelation. Bring it all the time into the storehouse so that there can be revelation. Sometimes you can be a part of a house or a part of a ministry or a church and revelation goes forth, but you miss it. Why? Because you're not honoring God in your giving. Now don't 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 shut me down when I'm when I'm talking to when when you when you honor God in your giving. This 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 is this is the the recompense for when you give, when you tithe correctly. He said, see if I wouldn't open up the windows of heaven. And pour you out blessing that there will not be room enough to receive. I don't care what part of the ghetto you may have grew up in, but what part of the country, you don't pour anything out of a window. So that word there, window, is literally translated into vision, hindsight. God gives you spiritual hindsight as you as you tithe. Why? So that you can see where you are spending money or wastelessly spending money. He said, I'm going to part the window, part that there will be a, a, a blessing. Blessing means to be empowered to prosper and to have good success in every area of your lives. That's what blessed means. Blessed don't mean, oh, make happy. No, blessed means to be empowered to prosper. You've been giving, you've been sowing, you've been tithing. God wants you to know you've been missing out on the benefit of giving. You are to be empowered to prosper and to have good success in every area of your life. Your home, good success. <laughs> your job, good success. In retirement, good success. In your bank account, good success. In your health, good success. Because he says, look, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake when you give. Again, Satan's already defeated. So the devourer, we ain't talking about the devil. The biggest devourer we deal with is us. We will, well, I ain't going to say we. I'm a, I used to have an issue that um, when I used to dress up all the time, um, I got delivered. Um, I'm working my way back to that. I got addicted to buying sweatsuits and sweatpants and, you know, hallelujah. So then when I do wear a suit, people say, oh, you losing weight? I'm like, mm-hmm. Just buy my clothes big. Um, I guess I wanted to be a rapper at some point in time. Um, I had a bad habit of buying shoes, right? And just buying clothes. Could only one, could only wear one outfit at a time. 
But when I moved and the people that helped me move, they said, what is in this box? I said, shoes. They was like, I mean, when I, I mean, it was a big tote. I mean, if you, if you could imagine the biggest tote that they make, I had shoes in that. And about two of them. Um, and so one day I was, I was, you know, thinking to myself, I said, okay, God, I need money for this, that, and the third. The Holy Spirit said, your light bill is in your closet. I said, what you mean my light bill in my closet? Say your light bill is in your closet. I look. I'm thinking, you know, it might have been a paper on there that I missed. He said, look down. I looked down at all them shoes. The Holy Ghost said, that's it. I mean, my shoes I ain't even wore yet. Still had, you know. The Holy Ghost said, take them shoes back and go pay your light bill. It ain't the devil. It's called self. And when you give, again, God opens up the window. He gives you that spiritual insight to see in the areas that you're just overspending. Now, in the next couple of weeks, the next couple of months, there is something coming that is going to horrendously uh, disrupt uh, the flow of money. Um, it's going to horrendously disrupt the flow uh, uh, of, of banking systems is going to horrendously disrupt the flow uh, uh, of, of medicines um, uh, worse than it did at the beginning of the pandemic. But the Bible says, although a thousand shall fall on this side and 10,000 on the other side, it shall not come nigh thy dwelling. As the believer, you will be protected, but you have to operate in kingdom principle. Just because we are protected don't mean you go out and start wasting things. Store up. One of the bad habits I have had, it was, it was a bad, good habit, um, after being homeless for a time. So when I did finally get a place, you know, I stocked all my cabinets up with canned goods and everything. Um bad thing about that um, I was looking in the cabinets the other day and some of them canned goods have expired I'm like Lord I guess if I'm going to buy the canned goods I need to eat well once you buy a pair of canned goods and you got that many why you ain't you been eating um, it's called fast food I'm, I'm just I'm just being I'm just being real I'm being transparent because you know we want the prophecy but we don't want the practicality of the prophetic like God's going to give you the riches. He's going to give you the increase. He's going to give you the wealth. But you have to be willing to admit there are areas of your life that you wastelessly spend money. With me, I buy food. I, I have bought food and buy food sometimes because I don't feel like cooking. I'm like, well, that makes sense, but not every day of the week. Not every day of the week. <laughs> Look at it like this. Whatever the tithe belongs to God, whatever it is, and the tithe is 10%, not $10, it's 10%. So if you get paid $100, that means 10 goes to God. You get paid 330 goes to God. If you get paid $1,400, that means 140 But off the gate belongs to God. Now, the thing about an offering, which is designated or something to be considered as a sacrifice, your offering should always equal to and supersede your tithe. I'm, I'm just saying this. I'm trying to teach y'all that when you give right, you go, you go, you're going to start seeing the benefits and the blessing of, of honoring God properly in your finances. What do you mean, given, 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 okay, so if your tithe was $140, let your offering be 140 and 50 cents. Seriously. I know it may, I know it may sound like I'm being, being, 
being comical, but no, seriously. It is equal to and super, it's to supersede your tithe because it's a sacrifice. And this, I had to learn this. If it doesn't move you, how do you expect it to move God? And don't you dare go, go to those services where the, where the prophet will guilt you into giving your light bill money. Baby, you better pay your bills. Because <laughs> oh, if you belong to a virtual church like this, we ain't got nowhere for you to stay, honey. <laughs> we ain't got no building, no fellowship hall for you to camp out in. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just saying... And I, and, I'm, I'm, and I say that to say this. People always talk about the wealth of the of the wicked is laid up for the righteous and shall be transferred to the righteous. The definition of the wicked is this. Those that have received the Lord yet do not do what he says to do. Those that confess Christ but don't live any kind of way that glorifies his name. That's wicked. And I, and I have to make that clear because when we say wicked, we think about the, the hip hop artists, the rappers and, 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 and uh, uh, the actors that, you know, just do lascivious and, and demoralizing things, uh, the politicians and this, that, and the third. No, wicked are those who confess the Lord but have turned their backs on him. That's wicked because to not know him at all, to have never been introduced to Christ, the Bible, the Bible says that, that you, basically that's an ignorant state because you don't know. And you can't be judged for stuff that, the, that you just don't know. But to be deemed as wicked, you have had to have had heard at one point in time and to receive him, to accept it who he was and yet say your way is better. That's wicked. And so people have to be very careful when they start talking about the wealth of the wicked because they may just be talking about themselves. Again, we've seen a lot of churches lose not just members, but lose individual men. They've lost ministry capability because they have mismanaged the one thing God entrusted to them, which was people's lives. Likewise, you have been given a privilege not just to be a part of these services or the, these this Bible teaching this month, but you've been entrusted with carrying out the word of the Lord that he's spoken to you. And so again, if he spoke over, if, if the Lord spoke into your life about healing, decree it. Receive your healing. Receive God as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, your healer. Because there's one thing to say, uh, 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 you did it for my mama, you did it for, okay, but God wants to do it for you. He wants to do it for you. He's the same God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's still a healer. He is still a way maker. Some... So I, uh, um, uh, I don't know who, who Crystal is, um, but I, I literally see an application that was on the bottom, but I hear God, he's moving it to the top and the, the God's going to literally move whatever, whatever the, the, the application of form, whatever it is, he's moving it to the top of the list and there will be no delay. Um, there will be no delay. Everything that, um, has, and it's been real frustrating, um, but God said, no, I, I'm literally putting you ahead of schedule. Uh, I'm putting you ahead of schedule and walk in victory, not in defeat. Um, walk in the knowledge that he who the sun sets free is free indeed. Um, one of the things about deliverance and freedom, I always look at the apostle Paul, and when people begin to when he began his ministry, um, people came up to him and he said, aren't you the one that, cru that you know, crucified the Christians? And Paul looked at them with this astounded look, like, I, Paul, have wronged no man. 
which was very confusing to everybody because he looked just like Saul. He talked just like Saul. Um, it was like, you you sure? You, you ain't here? When real deliverance takes place, you may look the same on the outside, but when transformation comes like it has for you, my sister, God has totally revitalized, reconditioned, and reconstructed you in his image. And there's power on the inside of you that if you would just allow him to cultivate it and tap into the faith of almighty God and to see things through the eyes of, uh, of Christ concerning your life, that he's gone before you, he's made crooked places straight and no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise up against you in judgment. Guess what? You have to start condemning it. Start, stop allowing the word curses to hover over you. Glory to God. Stop allowing those negative things that's been spoken over you to just stay in the atmosphere. No, every time a thought comes, you cast it down and say, I am not that way. I am not scared. Uh, glory to God. I, I will succeed. I will have great success in every area of my life. Even, even, and, and the thing about it is it's like being tormented by somebody. And I'm going to say this. I don't know if this is for you, Crystal, but I just sense it. Uh, uh, when someone starts fussing at you, and then sometimes you have to realize, wait a minute, you ain't talking to me because I ain't, I don't, like, I don't, this ain't got nothing to do with me. It's not like you're fussing at yourself. Sometimes the, the attacks that you go through and that you endure have nothing to do with you. People see you and instead of getting excited and, and being encouraging, they get jealous. And out of jealousy, they start attacking because they see you going to where they know they should be. But instead of saying, hey, can you help me because of pride, it comes out as attacking because they're not there yet. Don't, don't allow anybody to talk down to you. Stand up for yourselves. Stand up for yourselves. We, you, ain't, you don't get no more anointed by being a carpet and letting people walk all over you. Look, Jesus said, give, me, give you my cheek one time. Turn the cheek one time. He didn't leave no further instruction after that. I'm just kidding. I ain't telling nobody to go out here and fight. That's not what I'm saying. Like the man of God told her to go beat that girl. <laughs> no, but stand, stand up, stand up for yourself. You're not the little child anymore. Stand up for yourself. Young in, your words have weight. All of creation. Guess what? When Jesus, when Jesus was being tempted, the Bible says tempted. I like to say when he was being annoyed by Satan. When Satan was annoying Jesus <laughs> after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, one of the things he says, he said, look, cast yourself down from this place. Uh, because you know the Lord, the Father, give you your, the angels charge over thee. Again, we're made in his image and in his likeness, simply meaning that there are angels right now waiting for instruction waiting for instruction. Somebody somebody has convinced themselves that you have to be spiritually prayed up to go into the enemy's camp. And I hear the Lord say tonight, stay out of the enemy's camp. Ain't nothing over there that you need. Because what God is about to do, he's going to give you that which has not been tainted by the hands of the enemy. He's going to give you that which hasn't been distorted by sabotage. And, and people doing things for the purpose of, of, of manipulation in this season of your life, you will have good success. Good success. Good success. Good success. Um, Bo, as the Lord, the Lord would, would say this to you tonight, that within the next few weeks, 
as you grow closer and closer in him. Don't run from the dream that God gave to you as a child. And the dream that God gave to you as a child was literally standing before an innumerable and immeasurable uh, amount of people. God says, I'm about to bring those things to pass in your life so that opportunities that you are given, the greatness that is in you has been locked up too long. And God is about to redefine it. God's about to re retool it and utilize it for his glory. And as he uses it for his glory, think it not strange when people who set you up come back to apologize. And as they come back to apologize, I hear the Lord say, forgive them. Forgive them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And look, start practicing now. Cause some things are some things are hard to forgive some folk for I ain't scared to say it some things are hard to, to release some things that, that are hard to release um uh, uh but as as you begin to practice that now that you're gonna begin to see God's gonna move in your life because of the weight that unforgiveness has tried to have a stranglehold on you God said tonight it has lost his grip it has lost its grip and you're about to soar and excel and succeed in areas of your life that no one else is ever, that some people are not going to understand it. The, some people you want to tell them, Hey, this, this was God's doing. Some people ain't going to understand that. Some people be like, what, what you doing? I'm just trusting God. Really? No, truly, truly. God's about to use you as a, as an example to show them what God's grace and his mercy is all about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, um, everybody, God bless you. Thank y'all for allowing me to talk your heads off tonight <laughs> to share uh, what thus said the Lord. I, I, I'm excited about what God's about to do in these upcoming weeks and months uh, uh, for you. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we as the body of Christ, we are in this together. And so what God does for you, what God does for you, he ultimately will, will do it for the purpose of bringing glory, honor to himself. So be encouraged. Um, again, know that you're protected no matter what comes, no matter what happens in this season. Um, you're not, you're not American. You are a citizen of heaven. Hallelujah. I want everybody to understand that your, your inalienable rights as they are, have nothing to do with this country, but they do have everything to do with the country that is yet to come. Hallelujah. So we are citizens of heaven. We are citizens uh, of the kingdom of God and we are ambassadors of his kingdom. And I'm saying that because Others will be targeted for their patriotism. But I hear the Lord say, be as in, be enthusiastic about the kingdom which is to come. Because the Bible says that heaven and earth shall pass away. And we've talked about his word tonight. That's the only thing that's going to stand. That's the only thing that's going to hold weight forever. So God bless you. Um, again, join us this Saturday for fervent prayer. Uh, uh, join Pastor uh, Apostle Marvin the Prophet Azania, um, you know, for for prayer. Tell other folk for prayer. Come on, I know I know we like to tell people, you know, about the Prophet is in town. But hey, we need to pray. Glory to God. Um, hallelujah. So back into y'all capable hands, Prophet Azania and Apostle Marvin. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Apostle. I we thank you so much. Um, before we move forward, um, Crystal, uh, I I heard the Lord say this, and I'm gonna give you the scripture of Psalm 92, 12 and 14, and Psalms 92, 12 and 14, and I'm gonna read from the NIV version, and it says, The righteous will flourish like a palm tree, they will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. 
planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts, our God. They will still bear fruit in old age and they will stay fresh and green. And the reason the Lord told me to share that scripture with you, Crystal, because you are in a season of flourishing. And in flourishing, that means that there is going to be um, advancement in your life, not just in your physical, but your spiritual. And I hear the Lord say that tonight he's speaking to your confidence, to another level of confidence in you. Uh, we have to be careful when we uh, consider confidence with being angry and a bad attitude and a quick mouth and, and a, slick, a, slick, a slick tongue. Confidence is being confident in God, confident in who he called you to be, uh, not what naysayers have said you are. Uh, your name is Crystal for a reason. And I'm not talking about crystals like uh, witches use and <laughs> stones of that nature. But Crystal, you, you are a gem. God says you are a gem. And many people have tried to still treat you like um, a stone, a stone that or, or what it says a diamond is made good under pressure. You are a gem and you need to be reminded that you are. So tonight, God, I thank you for Crystal's life. Holy Spirit, I speak that as she is flourishing in this season, oh God, that anything that should not be attached to her, oh God, that it will be cut off, oh God. Lord, I thank you that, that her mind is even now, God, being renewed on tonight. Father, I thank you right now, God, for even the test that she's had to endure in her life, oh God. Because God, a lot of times we want to give you glory for getting us out of the test to give you, give you glory for the testimony. But God, we praise you. We praise you right now for the test that Crystal has had to endure, God. God, because she is still here. She is flourishing in this season, oh God. She is still planted, oh God, because she's rooted in you, oh God. And Father, I thank you on tonight, God, that you are uprooting every root work, every root word that has been spoken over her life on tonight, oh God. Father, I thank you that even now, God, that there's a transformation, God, of confidence like never before. There's confidence in you, oh God. Lord, I thank you for her life, oh God. We speak blessings over her life, oh God. And we lift her up to you on tonight, oh God. So Father, we thank you for your word and Psalms tonight over Crystal's life, oh God, that she shall continue to flourish, not in just any every area, but every area of her life, oh God, all the remaining days of her life, God, but allow her to be in position, oh God, position in her mind, in her spirit, in her soul, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. So tonight, Crystal, I, I speak God's flourishing, uh, power over your life on tonight. Amen. Okay, I am now going to stop the recording.